Allah. There is no God but He. From all needs He is absolutely free. From the sun to the sea and from the birds to the bees. When He wishes to create something, He merely says, Be. He is the one that we need and without Him we will not succeed. Without Him, it's like being lost in a jungle or a city. Rushing through the streets trying to find our way without holding tight to his rope we will certainly go astray. Now, to you this is my plea, please listen attentively. What do we run after in life and do we listen when he speaks? By which I mean when we hear his words, does it make our hearts weak? If it doesn't, maybe we are not connected to his speech or maybe it is something else in life that we seek. Whether that is riches or fame, success or a gain, whatever it may be, through this we will never feel free until we submit, we place our forehead to the ground and with it our nose and our knees and raise our hands and say, Lord, please. Only then we will see. We need to stop living like half-dead zombies because every day is just the same. Wake up, go work and plan our next holiday. Go to the best eatery shop for clothes from our favourite brands like Armani or just before we go catch the latest avatar movie. So how do we recognise Allah and His decree? The Islamic concept of God is so so easy because in Islam God is not a confusing trinity nor is He a complicated cosmic mystery for He has explained to us what He is clearly. So let's start by considering some of His attributes and qualities. He is Al-Awwal and Al-Akhir. He was the first and the last supreme finality. Al-Hayyu Al-Qayyum, the one who lives eternally and he exists entirely self-sufficiently. He is Al-Ilah, of our worship he is the one and only worthy. He is Al-Wahid, he has no sons, daughters or any other family. He is Al-Jameel, which is the owner of all beauty. And he is As-Samir. He has no ears, but he can hear when we call upon him with words which are sincere. He is Al-Basir. He has no eyes, yet he sees everything completely comprehensively. He is Al-Khabir, because of everything he is aware fully. And when in Ruku we call out to Al-Azim, who is the Supreme Almighty, and he is free of all need, which in Arabic is Al-Ghani. He is the source of all strength known as Al-Qawi. He is Al-Mu'min, the grantor of protection and security. He is the exalted Al-Ali, the majestic Al-Majid, the guardian Al-Wakil, the projector Al-Wali. He is Al-Wahid, the one and only. He is Al-Malik, the king who holds all sovereignty. And he is Al-Rahman and Al-Rahim. Al-Rahman is the one whose extreme mercy is with us presently. And Ar-Rahim is the one whose mercy extends indefinitely. So combining these together, Allah provides us mercy in every eventuality. With this small snippet of his qualities, let's try and remember him a little more consistently. We can try by rigidly incorporating our prayers five times daily. For inevitably, there will certainly come a time when we'll leave this world and witness the reality. And at that crucial moment, we will be completely lonely. Meeting the angels Munkar and Nakir, questioning us will be their main duty. Who was your Lord? They will ask you authoritatively. Will you be able to answer this question confidently? We will only be able to reply if we lived by his way and lived life righteously. Will we answer correctly and see our graves open widely? Or will we be among the losers whom the earth will squeeze tightly? The people we loved will walk away from our graves and then go on to continue with their work and their play. After which will we be left in solitary, never to return to see our community and come to think of it. We will then only be remembered by our friends and family as prehistoric ancient history.